you. Hallelujah. You've continued to bless us. You've continued to keep us. Hallelujah. You've continued to shower down your blessings on us. Hallelujah. Great is that faithfulness. Great is that faithfulness. Great is that faithfulness. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Everything that I've needed, you've provided. Everything that I've asked for, you've given it to me. Hallelujah. And we give you all the glory this morning. Hallelujah. Great is that faithfulness. Yes, God. Great is that faithfulness. Yes, God. Great is that faithfulness. Yes, Jesus. You continue to shield me. You continue to cover me. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name. We bless your name. We give you glory. We give you glory. We love you. We love you. We adore you. We adore you. You reign forever, Jesus. You reign forever, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Yes, God. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. you can give. Hallelujah. Come on, give him everything that you have. Hallelujah. Don't hold back on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we extol you. Hallelujah. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, oh God, yes. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We make your name bigger. We make your name bigger than every problem. We make your name bigger than every sickness. We make your name bigger than every financial burden. We make your name bigger. Hallelujah. Step in like you always do right on time, Jesus. Do it, do it, do it right now, Jesus. Do it, do it, do it right now, Jesus. We're calling on you. We're calling on you. We're calling on you. Oh, God, we need you. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, we need you. Yes, Jesus. Oh, God, we need you. Yes, Jesus. Oh, God, we need you. Yay. Come on and lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord in here. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Come on and bless his name. Come on. Not only the hand clap, but put your voice with it. Come on, give him glory right where you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, everywhere you are. Come on, give God praise. Give him worship. Come on, put those hands together. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Give God praise all over the place. God bless you. Father, we thank you. We honor you for your presence. You are Alpha. You are Omega. And we worship you, oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise. We worship you because you, there's none like you. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here today allowing us to worship you in spirit and in truth, allowing us into all these homes, Lord. Hallelujah. You're a good God. Hallelujah. You're a merciful God. And Lord, everyone that's watching, everyone that's tuning in at this time, Lord, we ask you to just move into their situation. You see us right where we are. You know everything we're dealing with. You know every circumstance. You know every issue. And Lord, we thank you for giving us the victory on every side. We praise you now. Hallelujah. We exalt you. We magnify you in advance. Hallelujah for what you're doing in our lives. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God glory. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Thank God for just allowing us to have another uh, awesome opportunity to worship him and to give him praise and glory and honor and to hear from him. It's important for us to hear from the Lord, and we certainly uh, thank God for how he has continued to keep us, and we praise God for each and every one of you. Uh, we thank God for all of you that are tuning in in our online uh, campus, and we bless God for you. And we're thankful for even having that opportunity just to come to you. We thank God for it. We don't take it for granted. And we honor the Lord for just being faithful. And uh, we certainly love you all. And we thank God for you. We miss you. Uh, and we thank, but we're glad that we're able to reach out to you in this fashion. So we are certainly praying for everybody uh, that you continue to stay safe, continue uh, to understand that you are safer at home. And uh, in some of those states where folks are talking crazy, you stay home. You don't go running out. You, know, you don't need your hair done that bad. You ain't going nowhere anyway. So you just might as well stay on home. Amen. I knew the women weren't going to jump on in on that, but that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> but, but we love you. We thank God for everybody. Uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter 4, and um, I think it's important that um, we make sure we continue to grow and get better uh, in spite of what the circumstances are that you continue to grow in God, and um, that means that sometimes preachers have to stop just only preaching about the crisis and just preach whatever the Lord has given us to help us get uh, better and to get stronger and to become uh, closer to him. Hebrews chapter number 4 and we'll begin reading at verse number 14. We'll read 14 through and including verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 4. Very familiar passage but a uh, simple thought but uh, just look at this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 14 if you have it, amen, can you say amen? Amen. Those of you at home, if you have it, you can say amen at your house. Amen. And if your neighbor doesn't have the Bible at home, share the word of God with them. And it reads, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. 
For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Amplified reads like this, Inasmuch then as we believers have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith and cling tenaciously to our absolute trust in him as Savior. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations but one who has been tempted knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is, the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence and without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor in your house and right here and tell him, come boldly. Amen. And look at him again and say, access granted. Uh, Give God a hand praise all over the building. Come on, give God praise. Uh, The book of Hebrews, as I often mention whenever I preach or teach in this particular passage, uh, I talk about the fact that the key word throughout the book of Hebrews was better. The key word throughout the book was better. Uh, What the writer was wanting the reader to understand that whatever they had now, it was better than anything they had had before. All of their religious experiences, all of their rituals, all the things that they had been doing, he says, what you have experienced in loving the Lord and becoming a child of the Most High God or being baptized into his name and being baptized with the Holy Spirit was now better than anything you had before. What he was doing was he was trying to express to the Hebrew believer, those that had been converted and had come and to believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. He was letting them know that what they walked away from didn't compare to what they have walked into now. In other words, amen, you have stepped into something that is going to take you higher and higher. And no matter what, how wonderful you thought your life was, your life will be even better now. So you have to understand that Amen. What the writer did was he first started to explain how Christ was superior to angels, that Jesus Christ was better than angels because some will start to dabble into worshiping uh, angels and start to think that they were such a higher level. But of course, he says, no, Jesus is better than angels and that he is more preeminent and he is more preeminent or superior to even Moses. Hallelujah. As wonderful uh, the deliverer and leader and savior, if you will, that Moses was, Jesus is higher than he is. And he begins to tell them uh, in various things about how the Lord was even better than the priesthood that they had in the Old Testament or the old order, the way that the Lord had set it up and designed it for them to be able to come uh, once a year to the high priest and be able to get a sacrifice for their sins. And that, I mean, later on, even in chapter 5, it says the priest is ordained among men to uh, pertain to God that he can offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin and can have even mercy on the ignorant and those that have compassion on the ignorant and them that are out of the way. So it was important, the ritual was important because even as the Lord had had them build the tabernacle in the Old Testament, it was giving, amen, all of them that had come out of Egypt access now, amen, to a connection to the Lord. The priest office was the one where, amen, there was a man, the man was in the middle. He went between the people and God. 
He was the one, the go-between, the intercessor that stood in the gap between the people and God. Of course, the other offices in the Old Testament, you had uh, the king or the governor who was going to rule over the people, or the judge, if you will. Or you also had the prophetic office where they spoke what the Lord had told, uh, was saying to the people. They came from the God to the people. Uh, but the priest was the one that stood in the middle between the people and God. And the Lord ordained it so that they could have access to him and they could deal with sin. Because the Lord has never been afraid to deal with sin of any kind. Hallelujah. In fact, the first priest, if you will, was God himself in the book in, in the book of Genesis and over in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve had sinned and then decided they were going to sow some fig leaves together to try to cover themselves. The Lord said that, listen, you're going to have to, we got to kill an animal to take care of this. And of course, he sacrificed an animal to begin to bring a covering or a remission of sin because, of course, we learned that there be, without the shedding of blood, there is is no remission of sin. So there had to be somebody that handled the issues, amen, that, that would separate God from his people. And so the Lord ordained the priest office. But he understood that the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies once a year to offer sacrifices for the sins of the people. And if that high priest was not, amen, worthy, amen, they would have to drag that high priest out because he would fall dead in the presence of of the Lord. But Jesus, hallelujah, is a far better high priest than any of those that had ever come before him. He says, and with the Hebrew writer, once you under, understand, we have a high priest that has gone further than any high priest has ever gone. Because, of course, when Jesus died on the cross, amen, the Bible describes him in the book of Ephesians as leading captivity captive. What that meant was that while he was dead, and was supposed to be in the grave. The Bible describes him as a conquering hero, uh, going and liberating those souls that had died, amen, prior to him, uh, and leading them out of hell into glory. Hallelujah. Amen. That was a conquering hero, the only one I know that can go into the devil's, amen, territory and take his keys and say, listen, I've got all control over everything. Uh, that's how powerful Calvary was. Hallelujah. And then he said, I you remember, amen, even after he had risen from the dead and he passed through the garden one more time by his grave and you saw Mary Magdalene standing there crying, wanting to know where the Lord was and where you tell me where you've taken him. He tells her, he, and of course she doesn't recognize him until he says her name. And when she, when she realizes who he is, he says, don't start, don't keep touching me, don't keep grabbing me because I have not yet ascended to my father but tell my disciples I'll meet them in Jerusalem because I'm on my way he's still ministering in the priest's office he said I've got to go I got some blood I got to put on the mercy seat for everybody hallelujah I've got to make that, that move hallelujah as the great high priest and so you realize that he has an eternal priesthood but what the writer was saying here there was a rest for the people of God there is still something that we could attain to. But he said after you understand this the Lord has made it possible for us to enter into that rest. Hallelujah. Because of the ministry that he's done. Oh I'm going to holler in a moment. But understand it's because this great high priest that we have. Somebody that is tending the altar. And the Bible describes him as ever living to make intercession for the saints. So his job, amen, is continuing to make intercession session for our sin. He's offering both gifts and sacrifices for each and every one of us. So now we have access. Hallelujah. That's why access was first granted when Jesus was on the cross. Hallelujah. The Bible describes there as being a great earthquake. And in the middle of all that darkness, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. He says, now it's not just the high priest that goes in, because Jesus, the great high priest, has gone 
in for one, for once and for all. That meant that it doesn't matter. Amen. Who's coming behind us? Because now all of us can get where he is. Hallelujah. All of us have access to the throne room of God. I wish I had somebody in here that understood that now the Lord is saying you have been granted access. You can get here now and you don't have to wait for no once a year thing. You ain't got to wait for nobody to come by and grab up all your sin. You ain't got to try to go get your own sacrifice. But what you can do now is come boldly on your own. Hallelujah. You can just come for yourself. You can get there on your own. You don't have to wait for the pastor. You ain't got to wait for the evangelist. You ain't got to wait for the prophet to come to town. You can just say, you know what, Father, I stretch my hands up to thee. I know all the help do I know. I need you right now, Lord. And instead of coming in with your head hung down and burdened down by sin, the Bible tells us you ought to come boldly since we got a high priest that has passed all the way through the heavens. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, since he went higher than any priest has ever gone. He says, now you got the opportunity to come for yourself. Open your mouth and holler, come boldly. Hallelujah, come boldly. Because you'll get whatever you need. You'll get, amen, mercy. Amen, for your sin. He gives you mercy. Hallelujah. But then not only that, he says, I'm going to give you grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to get mercy, but I'm going to find some grace on the way out the door. Hallelujah. He's giving me grace and I help me at the right time. He's giving you grace to keep you in the, in the tough moments. He's giving you grace to keep your mind. He's giving you peace that passes understanding. Open your mouth and shout hallelujah. He says, the difference in the old high priest is they couldn't understand how you really felt. Hallelujah. They would try to identify with the sacrifice. They were told to put their hand on the head of the sacrifice before they killed it. They were supposed to carry the names of the children of Israel on their, on their robe, hallelujah, on their chest. But it's said here that we've got one that knows exactly how we feel and never failed. Hallelujah, never sinned. He knows that we're human. Because he knows what it's like to be tempted. But he also knows how to overcome. So that's why he could look at us and say, I understand. And I got something to cover you. Hallelujah. Because the blood of Jesus has never lost its power. No, never. It still covers. Hallelujah. The, the song says it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley he knows how to cover me and keep each and every one of us and he says he knows he knows how to be touched with the feeling of our infirmity he knows our weakness but he says I did it and I didn't sin but he says, since we have this high priest that has gone further than any priest has ever gone, and this same priest knows how we feel, he said, let's come boldly. Hallelujah. He said, let's come boldly. Not arrogantly, but boldly, confidently. Because when we go to him, we know, hallelujah, that he's going to deal with it. And we're coming out better than when we went to it. Hallelujah. We're coming out of the situation better than when we went in. 
Somebody better catch that. You're coming out of it better. Hallelujah. It may not look like it now, but the Lord just told me to tell you, you're going to be better, stronger, wiser, richer than when you went in. Open your mouth and shout glory. Hallelujah. I'm closing. But he says, if you come with confidence, hallelujah, to the throne of grace so that you can get mercy. You came in for mercy. Hallelujah. You can receive mercy for your failure. But then he says, I'm throwing in grace that's going to help you at the right moment. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. You came in for mercy. And mercy, well, let me say this. Mercy is when you deserve a whooping, but you don't get it. I don't want what I deserve. Because what I deserve is punishment. So I come boldly to the throne for mercy. Touch somebody say access granted. I can come boldly to the throne for mercy. And I always visualize it like I came in for mercy. But then he, le he as I'm leaving, he said, now take this grace with you. Take this unmerited favor with you. Because you're going to be blessed. Oh, God, help me. You came in for one thing. But you leave with what you need for what's coming. Ha, huh, Lord, I'm going to say this. You come for mercy over your past. For what you've done. But you leave with grace for your future. Hallelujah. It says, his amazing grace to help in time of need. An appropriate blessing. Coming at just the right moment. As you're standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has the most impeccable timing of anyone because he's eternal. He knows how to drop the blessing at the right time. Hmm. He knows how to make any season do season. And as he says in the scripture, grace to help in the time of need. Some of you would say, Pastor, this is the time of need, and it is for many of us. But the Lord says, I've graced you for this. Hallelujah. Because all you had to do was come boldly. Come with confidence. That's why when you pray, you don't pray, you don't worry your prayer. You come with confidence saying, Lord, I thank you that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and think. Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We thank you for granting us access. We thank you, Lord, for tending the altar for us, living to make intercession for us, living to be our advocate. Hmm. We thank you now for the opportunity 
to come to a high priest that knows how we feel. That can sympathize with us. That can handle our sin and leave us better than when we came to it. Lord, somebody's troubled about their past, about their behavior, about their issues. But Lord, you're telling us to come boldly, to obtain mercy. And Lord, we thank you for the grace, the favor, the appropriate blessing at just the right time save, heal, and deliver. Restore. Set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God glory. Come on, hallelujah, right where you are, give him praise. Listen. There may be somebody that says, Pastor, I need prayer. I need deliverance. You're in your home. You say, well, Pastor, how can I get that? You can call the church. You can message us on our website. You can message us on our Facebook page. You can message us any way you can. Get a word to us. And we will be able to minister to you. We'll pray with you. We'll believe in God with you. We can, you can even schedule a baptism if you want to. Amen. You can schedule a baptism. You say, I want to be baptized in the name of the Lord. I want my sins washed away. I want a brand new start. I want to give my life to the Lord. Let us know. Please call the church, message the church, email the church, whatever you need to do, and we will do that for you. We'll be glad to. Uh, here. We're still here to minister to you. Folks can still be saved during this whole thing. Amen. It's still time to be saved. Still time to be restored. Still time to be healed. If you have a prayer request, let us know. We want to hear from you. We want you to let us know what you need for us to do. How can we be of assistance and help you get where God wants you to be? And uh, before we dismiss, we want you to understand, if you'd like to give, we have various ways that you can give and support this ministry. If it's been a blessing to you, we certainly are honored to be able to come into your homes and come into wherever you are and be able to minister to you. If you'd like to be able to give, you can give going to paypal.me forward slash spirit and life. Paypal.me forward slash spirit and life. You can also give by Venmo now. We are on Venmo spirit and life one. On Venmo spirit and life one. And also we're on Cash App. Amen. Dollar sign spirit and life one also. You can also just go to our website, spiritandlifeministries.com, and you can just click on the donate button, and you can donate any way you want to. Amen. We certainly appreciate all of you that are supporting and giving and making it possible for us to be here. And uh, we certainly thank God. You all have been wonderful. You've been overwhelming, just giving and supporting at random times. We thank God for that. We appreciate you, and we're, we, are, we are praying for you. We are believing God with you. Keep your heads up. Be encouraged. God is helping us through this whole thing. Amen. Uh, we're praying for you. We love you, and we care about you. So if you need us, let us know at spiritandlifeministries.com. Uh, also, join us on Tuesday night at 7.30 on uh, all these same platforms, uh, Steve Hamilton Ministries on Facebook. Also, you can join us on our website uh, for Bible study. We're going to conclude the series. It's going to take a miracle this week. We're concluding it this week. Also, our Palmdale folk, we have uh, been starting the last couple of weeks. We've had a Zoom Bible study on Monday night. So if you are interested, let us know. Uh, we, we had a, a very a great crowd last week. Amen. We had a great class, uh, but um, join us. Uh, those of you from Palmdale, we love you. We care about you. And so we, we have a, our Bible study on Monday night, tomorrow night at 730. If you'd like the Zoom information, inbox me or, or let us know and we can get the information so you can be on the Zoom 
Bible study tomorrow night. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Everybody stay safe. And we will see you, Lord willing, on Tuesday night. In Jesus' name. Give God praise all over the building.